sometimes you can make some weird decisions in poker and it ends up putting you in a weird spot. John Duffy is a guy that we've seen make some weird decisions, including sizing stuff. And he's gonna make some weird sizing decisions in this hand that we're gonna talk about. It's a cash game hand from the UK. It's the bad boys of poker in the UK. These guys are rough and tumble. They're gonna go fight at each other in the alley after the hand. Anyway, get to the river because there's some very interesting stuff that goes on in the river. And John Duffy is going to be in a very tough spot against Sam Grafton and Ludovic Gylik. And if you don't know who those guys are, Sam Grafton is a relatively famous UK player. And Ludovic Gylik's had some big time success on the EPT back in the day. And is definitely one of the crazy men of poker. Meaning he just puts so much pressure on people. He loves bluffing. He loves taking really wild lines. And we're going to see him do that in this hand as well. And the people who suggested this hand are both Australian, so they must still love the mother country of the, the UK. That's uh, Ben Page and, and Mark Testart. Good job suggesting, guys. You're always very good at that. They suggested on Twitter. They included a YouTube link and a timestamp. That's what you got to do if you want to suggest a hand for the breakdown. The best news of all, of course, is not only are we going to mention our sponsor, Nitrogen. I love mentioning them. You know, they're the guys who have online poker. They have casino games. They have sports betting. They got the whole deal. It's Bitcoin only, so it goes in and out very, very quickly. Your money, you get it in 90 minutes when you withdraw. But Grant wrote a song about it, and he's going to sing it right now. Nitrogen is my friend. That's just the beginning. You'll yeah, get yeah. the rest later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, we <laughs> often tweet about our videos and our podcasts, and when we do, we include a link to Nitrogen. You have to use that link if you want access to our exclusive exclusive monthly, monthly Poker Guys tournament. It's a great tournament. It's got a huge overlay. You definitely got to check that tournament out. You also got to check out their sports betting and their casino games. Get on Nitrogen. Get you some poker. Let's get to the hand. Because you're I, a lucky bastard. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> I, was, I was, you know, I was, like, directing... Uh, uh, actually, it's funny enough, as if, uh, what we were talking about the other day, hold on a minute, um, uh, as if, what we were talking about the other well, day. It's, it's in the old, uh, uh, hang on a second, I've got, and, big, uh, I've got big hand coming to think, it's got the eight high. The sea, the, I've been desperate for the toilet for, for 20 minutes an and I can't leave, I'm just, just, every hand is just so right, excited. The next, uh, the next raised pot, free flop, I'm just going to call, and then, so we see a flop, because I was like uh, directing the show, you know. Because we were in a TV studio. So studio you, you, no you very interesting flop. flop because you were directing the show. And you JD you has flopped yeah, the nuts. Exactly. Because I thought we. Ludo has flopped an over pair and opening straight okay. draw, and Sam has bottom pair. Okay. What's a quarter of that? <laughs> 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 JD flops the nuts and asks <laughs> what a quarter is. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Um, no, mate, uh, we couldn't squirt this any better. I'm out absolutely out loving his sizes. And I mean, <laughs> the Ludo, the over pair, the <laughs> heart, <laughs> the straight draw. We're we, we doing that Sam. We just check raising the last hand. He's, yeah, he's, so he's got two options, I think. Only calls quarter, on I mean, you could check raise this one, right? Oh, definitely. You can get value from obviously loads of things. And and the squid with bottom pair and the backdoor spade. Back back the backdoor back spade's edging us towards a call, right? Depends what comes. Well, heart on the turn. So yeah. maybe it's at the flush. Also, if the, if the ace comes for Sam, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good bluffing card for John as well. Oh, wow. JD checked the turn. Oh, wow. Sam has made trip fours. JD just snap checked Leaving back the straight. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting now because that Ludo is like right, um, Sam might go for an overbet. But what does Ludo do call. here? I mean, I think Ludo's got got a check. Really. Okay. Like that, uh, but yeah, Sam, Sam, to Sam has to value one. bet. Like, fucking got done. All right, there are some misdraws out there, right? The, the seven X is yeah, and obviously yeah, that one, Ludo. Ludo can have loads of hands to call him with. He's got a little bit more. One seventy-five. Yeah, yeah three-way pot. I assume JD's just going to call here, but it'd be a pretty sick raise for value. Mm. This, this is a nice one, maybe thinking you can call the 175 and get an overcall perhaps yeah, from Ludo as well, right? Yeah, that's true. But you don't always have to raise to get the extra value. Calling maybe wins him more. I'd be very impressed if you're Look at this the full Hollywood. <laughs> he's looking back at the cards. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to call it. Yeah. And, and Ludo, what does Ludo do? There's not much Ludo can do here. Well, but can, I mean... The way it's played though, but what's Duffy can have absolutely loads of good value cards. Yeah. I mean, he has to have a. He has to. Ludo Sam to be bluffing, yeah, and uh, John to be calling with a six. How's Ludo got okay. It's, it's yeah. it, it is tough. How did you even fucking have a jet? <laughs> but Ludo has sevens with a heart. He does have sevens <laughs> so with a maybe, heart. So maybe, just maybe. He Check does, rates. and he no. He kind of knows that Jay doesn't have a full house. So I mean, if you're if you're really going for it here, it is. It's not the worst check raise bluff. But. You are Jet Riz bluffing here against JD. It's but, but this is th this is like a great yeah, combo of, hand of cards to Jet Riz bluff win, yeah. and it's this. He's not. He's like a goofy yeah, game. Yeah, he like isn't like thinking about calling. Well, normally you get a round. But it's yeah, a goofy yeah, game. You want to you want to show the bluffs. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. We lost a check race there as well. Yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. And he is Here going we, for it. And I think this and might he work. Is going for it. Oh. I do not think it's going to work. Actually, it's Duffy. <laughs> Duffy. I don't <laughs> think it's going to work. This is. This is actually. Yeah, this is actually pretty crazy. Sam's hating Sam it. Sam has to fold, right? There are some worlds where Sam calls and JD folds. <laughs> oh, if Sam calls, JD definitely folds. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, John can't overcall. It's a very but interesting. It's the hearts out there. It's a very interesting hand. The primary draw's got there, right? Wow. Uh, no, and I think this is John folds. No, this is unbelievable. He'll probably no. fold in the best. I'm He'll probably find the best hand. There you go. No, he said it straight away. He's folding. I'm loving how Sam was just. He's folding the best hand. Look at this. Oh, I, I feel a bit sorry for JD's face there. Isn't he? <laughs> 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 fucking hell, and I'm oh, loving how Sam was just having. No what an incredible parlay for Sam Grafton. This is something that almost never happens. He gets to catch the bluff with a pretty good hand, and then the guy behind him who has a better hand ends up folding. I don't know if this has ever actually happened to me in a big <laughs> spot. This is crazy. Uh, I've definitely seen it happen multiple times, but it is still the kind of thing that you dream about in poker and feels like it almost never happens. All right. It's, it's, it's gold. It is. It's wonderful. It's wonderful gold, which is, you know, more abundant than you might think. But let's take a look at this chronologically on the river and see if this should have happened. All right. So the turn checks through. Makes plenty of sense when yeah. the heart comes. Even if his opponents don't have hearts very often based on the flop. As Duffy, it's hard to get called by worse hands when you bet the turn, right? So mm -hmm. it's fine to check the turn. It's fine for everybody to check the turn. We get to the river. Grafton bets his four. Not much to say here. Totally reasonable. Trying to get called by Duffy's overpair or Ludo's six or something like that, right? I mean, Grafton betting and Duffy calling both make perfect sense. Seems very straightforward. Well, I want to talk about Duffy calling, actually. Okay, I don't know great. if that's super straightforward. Huh. I think we should consider raising as Duffy because... When you put it all together, it looks like Grafton has exactly a four, right? And we're yeah. not necessarily expecting Ludo to overcall or to get any special action from Ludo once we put any money in as Duffy, right? Um, that's absolutely right. Right. I mean, Grafton has like a four or a bluff, right? Right, right. And so if he has a bluff, so be it. We're not going to get any money anyway. Right. But if he has a four, he's going to consider calling. And that's great because obviously we beat a four. Of course, the traditional worry would be we're going to get called by all the better hands and fold out all the worse hands. I think we can get called by a four. I don't think there are very many better hands. As we said on the flop, wouldn't Grafton raise two pair or a set on the flop? Wouldn't Grafton often raise a flush draw on the flop? Don't those seem like likelihoods? They seem like fairly good likelihoods, especially the made hands. The flush draws, I think he's going to raise a fair amount of, but certainly not all of them. So I think he can have some flushes. Um, for sure. I think Duffy, though, can have really strong hands here now that the board is paired. Duffy is the guy who can have pocket sixes and pocket fives, for example. Duffy, even if Grafton has a four, Duffy could have a better four. Now, it turns out Grafton has the best four, so that's fine. But um, Duffy can have ace four here and things like that, and Grafton could decide, oh, geez, even though I have a four, it's not necessarily good. But th to me, the biggest problem is, like, Duffy's got pocket sixes, pocket fives, and it's strange for him to suddenly come out raising the river. He's not the guy, I, th I think, necessarily, who does crazy stuff like that. Like, that's Ludovic Gylix. So you think Grafton's folding bag. a four if Duffy raises? I think he's strongly considering it and mostly folding. Okay. I think he should consider it. I okay. Do. That's, I mean, you should certainly consider calling. And he's obviously, got a very it would have worked out a lot better than what actually happened here. Yes. So let's talk about what actually happened. Let's talk about Ludovic Gylix now raising, because Duffy calling is, you know, marginal and fine. I, I don't think it's like a bad play or anything. Right on. All right. So, so Ludo now raises. Is this a good time to raise? Is this a good story? At least he has sort of blockers. I mean, he blocks a straight. He blocks the flush a little bit with the seven of hearts. Not exactly the heart blocker you want, but it's something. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I get it on some level, right? He's sitting there. He's like, Grafton almost never has a full house, right? Graf yeah. The only full house Grafton has is Jack four suited, it feels like. Yeah, that makes he sense. He would have raised two pair or a set as Grant said on the flop. Um, there aren't that many flushes out there. Duffy doesn't have a flush. Duffy almost never has a full house because he just called the river himself. Yep. He didn't raise. So he can usually eliminate strong hands from Duffy's range. Like the strongest hand you'd ever think he would have would be 8-7. You really wouldn't even think he has that too often, right? Um, so I get it from Gallic's point of view. He just has to get through Grafton most of the time, although this time probably not. But the story is bad, man. The story is I don't is believe bad, it at all. And by the way, like, sure, Grafton can have a bluff, but of course Ludo is beating that. But Mm -hmm. Grafton also very, very much can have a four and looks exactly like he has a four as played. Is that a, a range we want to target? And I think Ludovic Gaelic is a asking himself that question and saying the answer is yes, but is the story good enough? I mean, wouldn't you bet, if you somehow didn't raise a flush draw on the flop, wouldn't you bet your flush on the river if you were Ludovic Gaelic, just worried that it's going to go check, check behind I mean, you? it just checked all the way through, and now the board paired, and now you're raising with your flush, it just doesn't seem that believable. I guess you could have the nut flush and decide to 
do that. But mostly, as Grant's saying, you're just going to bet that puppy yourself because you're so afraid it's going to check through. And of course, the full houses are very unlikely for Ludo the same way they are for Grafton because of the $40 bet on the flop and him not raising. Right. So on the story board. really doesn't add up, and Grafton sniffs it out and makes the call, which both of those things make sense, right? Absolutely. I would call here as Grafton, too. I wouldn't love it, but I would 100% do it. So now we get to Duffy with another big decision here. And Usually when you're in the spot, I could see myself sitting in Duthie's seat and thinking just kind of like, from all of my poker knowledge, if this type of situation happens, I'm supposed to fold a straight, right? Absolutely. It's like an if this, then that situation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if the guy check raises and the other dude calls, you have to fold almost all your hands, even most of your strong ones, right? That's what it feels like, especially when the board's paired and there's three hearts out there and we only have a straight. Like, that's what we tell however, ourselves. However, the situation demands that we think about that a little bit harder yeah. because, as we said, Ludo's story doesn't really add up, right? We can we can say, okay, sometimes he did a weird thing and has a full house or a flush and fine, good for him, but mostly it's a bluff, right? Mostly he's just bluffing. Yeah. And then there's Grafton, who, as we've said multiple times, looks exactly like he has a four. Now, we know he doesn't have a bluff anymore because he called, but if he had a full house, let's say Grafton for some reason played sixes this way, pocket sixes, which you would never expect. No. You'd really expect him to put in another raise on the river, right? You would have to expect that. So if he had jack four suited, you'd most likely expect him to put in another raise on the river. Yeah. When Duffy just calls the initial bet on the river. You really would. So Grafton rarely has a flush, very rarely, and really, really looks like he has a four. I mean, I'm going to push back a little bit on this very rarely thing. I think he has some flushes here. I think he's got some smaller flushes. I mean, I don't think he's all obligated to raise every flop, even though it was a $40 bet and call with all his flush draws. I mean, I, I think I he's going to raise a lot. I, don't I get think what you're saying, but if you're sitting there with the nine high flush draw, you have like the nine deuce of hearts and you called pre-flop yeah. because the price was really good, you're raising that flop when, when Duffy bets 40 and, and Ludo calls, right? I mean, not everyone is, not every time. And I don't know if Grafton is every time. I, I think he's doing it a fair amount. I think that's different than he rarely has a flush. I think those are different statements. Okay, fine. I think it's extremely unlikely. Unlikely enough that I think we should call with a straight. That's oh, that's where I'm landing. I think we should call with a straight, too. Yeah. I still think he's got enough fours in his range and that, like, I think we're almost always beating Ludo if I'm sitting there and I have time to think about it in Duthie's seat, and we're beating Sam enough, and the price is giving us way, 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 way good enough odds to be able to call and be right enough of the time that we absolutely should call here as Duthie. But I think I'd only figure that out if I really had time to think about it or sort of yeah, I agree. remove myself from the situation. I think in the moment, I can understand why Duthie folds. I agree. I probably would end up doing the same thing if I just gave myself 30 seconds and decided this is what I'm going to do. But upon inspection, I think this is a pretty clear call. Mm -hmm. Boy, things really took a turn there once we got to the river, I must say. So a lot of interesting decisions for all three players, especially though I would say for Gaelic and Duthie on the river. What do you guys think about these decisions? We also had real, real issues with Duthie only betting $40, or excuse me, 40 pounds on the flop. Um, let us know in the comments what you think about Duthie's decisions here, as well as to fold the river. Do you like Gaelic's decision? He does have blockers. There's, the, the other guys aren't showing tremendous strength. Still, is this a good enough story? We say no. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out Do John Duthie playing weird in other spots by clicking right up here. John Duthie against Jason Kuhn. He's a little outclassed by that guy, but things yeah. might go his way in that hand. It's pretty interesting. It is pretty interesting. And in fact, I think his image really helps him in yeah. that hand, which is pretty sweet. Um, another thing to check out is our podcast. That's right. Twice a week, we put out the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the poker guys. It's where we break down a hand just one hand, like this hand, except instead of doing it for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we do it for a solid 45 minutes. We go down every single branch of the decision tree, checking everything out, arguing about everything. There are more fake songs, more jokes, <laughs> a little bit more anger. It's definitely worth checking out. It's on all your favorite podcast apps. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and give us a like.